ultimately you have to do work on yourself. Like you need to be able to get turned on dancing in the mirror for yourself. Hello and welcome to the Feminine as Fuck podcast. I'm your host, Monica Yates, a period and women's life coach, where I help women to harness the power of their period and connect back to their true superpowers. In these episodes, we'll be talking about all things periods, vaginas, hormones, women's health, sex, confidence, food, femininity, and all the stuff that goes through our heads. You will walk away from each episode with new nuggets and truth bombs, as I don't seem to have a filter and I love talking about all the shit that people are too afraid to say, but everyone is thinking. Welcome back, ladies. Um, so this is part two. If you haven't gone back and listened to part one of the episode about manifestation and what else is it about? Manifestation, ego, alignment. Um, I'm literally going to my podcast right now to look it up. Talk about organization station, Monica. Oh yeah. Part one, soul alignment, manifestation and New York City again. This is part two to that episode because that one was long and I had a ton more questions still. So we are wrapping into part two. Now, firstly, I've just done an epic, epic in-person uh, cacao and convos with Dominic and um, Brian. They were both at the Bold Leap Live event that I was just talking at. And my God, oh, I haven't talked to you guys since I did the events. I did the event. Like I did my talk and I was on the panel and did Q&As and it was just... Like my soul is always ignited. When I'm doing podcasts, it's ignited. When I am on my calls with my mastermind girls and my academy girls and my queen alchemy girls. Oh yeah, that's my new program coming guys, queen alchemy. And I'm so excited. And we talk about it actually in that next episode with, not talk about it, I name drop it in the next episode of Cacao and Convos with Dominic and Brian. Actually, firstly, I've got a podcast, uh, Cacao and Convos dropping with my friend Amy. And then the one after that, we'll have them. And I mentioned it in there and we were talking about like pleasure and sex and all the good like man, woman stuff. Um, And I was just saying that like ultimately you are responsible for your own pleasure. So even when there's blocks and stuff in the bedroom that you can feel like he can't fix that. I know men like to fix things and they're wired to want to fix things, but ultimately you have to do work on yourself. Like you need to be able to get turned on dancing in the mirror for yourself You can't expect your man to do everything for you. And that's sort of what Queen Alchemy is all about. It's really about tapping into your pleasure, your sexuality and your sensuality and like having the confidence to like I've just been doing, walking down the streets of New York with a white button down and one button too far down undone compared to most people. So you can see my black lace bra. Now, that doesn't come with any weirdness or anything because I've really allowed myself to tap into my sensuality and my creativity and my slowness and that juiciness of being a woman, it's fucking good. So I'll just let that sit there for a moment. I don't know what I was going on. Oh, soul is ignited. So my soul is always ignited. And then it was like fucking quadruple ignited, actually more than that, when I was doing my talk. And then afterwards, when the all the women were coming up to me asking me questions, I was like, I was, I was, I wanted to cry with happiness. Like this is my life's work. This is what I'm meant to be doing. This is how I'm meant to be changing the world. This is how I'm meant to be impacting women's lives. It was amazing. And it is, it is really nice doing in-person stuff because we're all connected. We're all one. Um, and we are all energetically connected. Doing all my zoom calls are amazing. Like I can feel the vibes. Everybody can feel the vibes. They're there. Right. But it's a whole nother level. When you get that level of vibes in person, it's like, fuck me dead. Um, so with that being said, ladies, I am going to start and I am now declaring it double. It's like the third time I've declared it because I'm saying it on my podcast. I am now going to be doing one three day event every single year. I've wanted to do them for ages and I've put it off because of fear that nobody will buy a ticket or that it won't like, just fear, 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 right? Like fear of failure. And I just was like, fuck that, fuck that. And I asked myself the question of what if, it worked out perfectly and then I would do it. So that's what we're going to do. And it is going to be perfect. And guess where it's going to be? I initially was like Sydney and then I was on the call. I was on a group call with my coach yesterday and then all my sisters that are in the same group as me. Cause it's like really epic mastermind. And they were like, why the fuck are you doing it in Sydney, Monica? And I was like, um, cause I live there. And they were like, where is your soul home? And I was like, New York. And they were like, why the fuck? wouldn't you do it in New York? And I was like, oh, because majority of my followers in Australia and they're like, and 
do it in New York. So ladies, we will be doing the event. I'll be doing the event in New York City. Yes, I'm very excited. It's gonna, I'm very excited. Now I'm getting really excited and I'm smiling whilst I talk about this. Um, that's gonna be happening around September time, September, October um, this year, 2019. So if I were you, I would book a ticket right now before they get expensive, like a flight over and make a holiday out of it. Make it a fun, high vibe manifestation two weeks to really propel your life basically. Um, so I'm really excited, really excited for that. Um, all right, let's jump on in. Let's jump on in. So, um, the next question that we we were asking, uh, somebody asked for this episode, well, for part one now or part two was, can you please explain the whole ego thing a bit more? Really great question because I mentioned the word ego a lot. So I'm going to put it in really simple terms. Ego is generally head, right? Soul is body. So when you come up against an answer, against a problem and you get defensive, you get in your head, you're trying to prove yourself to somebody else or trying to show that you're good enough, your ego is speaking. Or if you are trying to validate yourself or get validation or anything where it's very head dominant, generally speaking for a, for a woman, right? Men are different. I'm not talking about men, I'm talking about women. For women, that's ego, right? When you're in your soul, when you're doing what feels good, when you're like feeling it in your body, when you are doing the stuff that aligns with your soul and your womb and your heart, that is then soul, right? Or womb or heart, it's not ego. So let me give you an example. If someone says, hey, you shouldn't have yelled at me. Or if someone says, hey, why did you get so angry yesterday when I asked you that question? If you, go, if you start to go on a defense, I didn't get angry. I don't know what you're talking about. You were just getting angry and like you were being a dick. So therefore, like how was I meant to respond? That's ego, right? Because ego never likes to admit that it could be wrong or that it didn't react in the highest good right? If that, hap- if that situation had happened though and you, and you were like, you're so right. I actually was like such a bitch to you yesterday. I'm so sorry. You just triggered me and it didn't feel very good. That is a soul response because you're acknowledging that you didn't do the greatest thing. But if you're defending yourself or if you're getting wrapped up in your head or trying to get validation or trying to be quote unquote the best, then you are in your ego. Okay. So that's sort of that. So another example, for example, for example, another example, for example, is your ego will pretty much always try and keep you safe and small, right? Your brain is wired for safety. So the classic one that I always say, like if I want a sales call or something and they're like, yes, 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 yes. And then I say the, the price and they're like, oh no, that's their ego, right? It's fear. It's a fear based decision. It's response of no, no, no. Instead of listening to their soul and their soul is like, yes, you need to say yes and you're going to figure the money out later. The amount of people that have like said yes and then like all of a sudden the money literally come to them in the most random ways the next day happens all the time, right? If you manifest, if you put it out there and if you go, my only option is listening to my soul and I know that the universe is going to provide me with the money, it will happen. But if you constantly are living, you're living out of fear or constantly making the quote unquote safe decisions, don't expect the universe to show up for you because you are not giving it your fucking all. If let's talk about business for a second. So if in business you're like, oh, my only option is succeeding, then guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna succeed. If you're like, maybe I'll succeed, maybe I won't, if you've got like the trampoline to fall on, then don't expect yourself to succeed, right? Because you part of you is waiting to fail. Okay. So like, think about it this way. Ego is very disempowering. Okay. Afterwards, disempowering. You get a good adrenaline rush and it's disempowering afterwards. If you were like wanting to hire a coach and like, I really need to work with this woman. Like she's going to change my life or change my business or whatever. And as I always say, ladies, the way you change your life, it's going to affect your business positively, right? Like doing life work is going to benefit your business, especially as a woman, because it's all, it should be more about feeling and soul based than, or I like it to be, I should say, it doesn't have to be. I like it to be more about feeling soul based, feeling ignited rather than money and like what's good for the ego and like what allows me to like 
fly first class, right? I'm all about why and then the money becomes the byproduct because you're so focused on the why and you're so focused on giving so much to your clients and the transformation. Anyway, what I was saying, what I was going to say was like, let's say for example, you say no in a sales call to the person and they go through the objections with you, like the, the coach goes through the objections with you and you're like, no, 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 no. You're still like, no, by the end of it because of fear, right? A fear of not being able to find the money, a fear of the money not showing up when you need it, a fear of not being able to surrender and trust the universe that it will provide for you when you need it, fear of not actually getting the results that you want to get. Or not actually, wouldn't it be not getting the results, but you not being able to put in their work because of self-sabotage. You say no to that call. When you get off that call, do you feel empowered or disempowered? Are you like, fuck, yes, I'm taking control of my life. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Or do you feel like, oh my God, oh, that was so annoying. I really wanted to work with her and I can't, and you make up the excuse that I can't afford it. Like I always say money's like, money is the excuse, but it's never the actual problem. There's something much deeper down. We just use money as the bandaid. Okay, or it's the most surface level answer. That is going to be that. That's a really good way to feel into and understand the difference between your ego and your soul. And sometimes soul can be saying something to you that your ego is like, "Hell no, girlfriend." But your soul is always right. And even if, for example, it gave you an outcome that wasn't perfect, it might have been the outcome you needed to get to the next thing that you need to get to. Right? You can only connect the dots going backwards, not forwards. And that's why trust, surrender, and listening to your soul is ultimately always going to give you the best outcomes in life, right? Listening to your ego is basically listening to like what you should do or what society wants you to do or what's safe and what's comfortable. You, if you want the uncomfortable, if you want, if you want a life that's different to everybody else's, if you want to live like the 1%, then don't expect to do the comfortable, right? Majority of people live a comfortable life. If you want to be living an extraordinary life, don't, don't, then settle for doing the comfortable things. You've got to do the extraordinary things. You've got to do the 1% things. Hopefully that lands. Um, Okay. Um, Next thing is taking a leap to travel slash invest in something when you feel too, but financially not really practical. Oh, I kind of answered that, right? There's always going to be an excuse. Like it wasn't, it wasn't practical for me to come to New York, was it? I just had surgery on my leg. Like it was the most unpractical thing ever. Was it the right soul decision? Fuck yes. Because not only was I able to help so many women see the things they needed to start working on, I've also been able to allow women to start working with me. Women now know about the work that I do. They have realized the gap that they were missing in their life that they weren't paying any attention to. So they've been able to heal very fast from hearing me speak. What else has been so good about coming to New York? Obviously being in my soul home. Um, I've been creating epic, epic content for my clients. Um, had this amazing podcast interview this morning for my account, my account convos. And then I was talking to the men and, um, they're going to, we're going to do the event together because I want to do, I, we need more man and woman events. Men need healing with women and women need healing with men. So I've decided that the women, that the event that I'm going to do in, in New York, uh, towards the end of the year is going to be a combined event where women will go off and do their things. Men will do their things. And there's going to be a lot of integration work because ultimately we need that. There's literally no point in you continuously doing women only event because how the fuck do you expect yourself to integrate that with men around? But as soon as you can understand men, you're going to be able to get the best results because as a woman, we want men, right? So let's work with them. Let's start to understand them a little bit better, right? If I didn't come to New York, I wouldn't have met them. So always, always listen to soul, even when it doesn't seem practical. Um, there's also that line though, and I think someone's once asked me about this in a, in an Instagram live, there's always going to be a line of respecting money. Do not be financially fucking stupid. Do not spend money with, with literally out of ego, right? So you wouldn't go buy a Celine handbag and take out a loan for that. Is that really going to benefit your life? Yeah, it might raise your vibe, but what would be better spent on that money? It'd be better spent to hire a coach that could raise your vibe to then help your business grow so that you can then have the money to go buy a Celine bag. If traveling is going to increase your vibe and you're going to be able to create amazing content and become magnetic and find yourself, then yeah, if that's fucking smart, if that's, if you feel like you're respecting money, then do it. But if you feel like you're making a choice out of ego, which isn't obviously respectful to money, then you wouldn't do it. Much like you could say no to investing in the, in the thing and you might think that's respecting money, but it could also be disrespecting money because ultimately money is just energy. It's not, it's not good. It's not bad. It's not evil. It's not 
what's the opposite of evil? Amazing, whatever, right? Money is just the tool that we use as a value exchange. So when you think of it like that, it's like, okay, if I give my value to this thing, aka money, will I get value back from that thing or that person? And if it's like, yeah, then it's like, great. Then it's what I always ask. And I'm like, great, get it or do it or buy it or pay for it or go to go for the trip. But if it's like, oh no, I won't get anything back, then you're not really respecting money, are you? So, and, the, and the thing that you get back would be feelings, like giving to charity. It could be a feeling of gratitude and of like what a gift your life is. Um, hopefully that makes sense and that feels good. Um, okay, next question. What does alignment look like for you and how do you know this was your career path? Um, how did I know this? Okay, how does alignment feel for me? I love these Q&A one, like these Q&A episodes, ladies, because I feel like I'm able to be interviewed and it makes it so much easier than just like sometimes just talking, although I do like to go on tangents. Okay, so what does alignment look like for you? It doesn't look like anything. It feels. Oh, yeah, that was good, Monica. It doesn't look like anything. It feels, right? So what alignment is for me could be different to the other person, but I feel like we both feel – no, I, I know – that alignment feels the same for pretty much everybody. How does it feel? It feels like freedom. It feels like I am my own boss. It feels like nobody ever telling me what I have to do. It feels like it just feels so easy. That's actually the best word for it. It feels easy. It feels easy. Life is easy. Getting up in the morning is easy. Doing work is easy. Um, paying for things is easy. Showing up is easy. It, it's fucking easy is what it is. That, that, I'm just going to leave that there because that's, that's the best way to put it. Um, that's the best way to put it. Okay, next part of that question was, how did you know this was your career path? So I don't really think I – oh, I think it was a point in time where I really knew, but I fell into it for my own journey, right? I fell into it through trying to understand my own cycle and understand why I lost my period um, for so long and how I could get it back. And then once I started to get into that, I just kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into this work. And then, and I was already into personal development beforehand and I was already doing my coaching certification before that because I was very interested in understanding humans' brains. And I was very interested in understanding psychology, but I didn't want to be a psychologist and sit in a room. I've always loved talking, right? Um, so and don't want to be like in clinic or something like that. I wanted to like, I wanted to travel. I wanted to just like, I've never been a sit at a desk sort of person. I've always, I've always known that I'm here to live a big life. I've always known that I'm here to make big impact. Always, always, always. I've known that. Like I've always said, I want to be the next Tony Robbins, but a girl version. And obviously not talking about Tony Robbins things, but talking about my things. But like, I want to be able to make that much of an impact. So actually, fuck, I will need to write a book one day, won't I? Because that also helps the impact. Um, people always tell me, can you please write a book? And I'm like, I need a ghostwriter for that shit because although I don't feel, I actually feel like it's a massive limiting belief. I don't think I need a ghostwriter. I think I just need to feel when that feels good and then it will happen. And right now it doesn't feel good to write a book. I just, I need more, I need more juice. I want more experiences before I write a book. Um, I want to be able to make more impact before I write. I feel like I'm writing a book is almost like the end of the road. And I'm like, I'm not ready to end this journey. I am like only just starting, right? Which is crazy. Um, okay. So how, how did I know this is my career path? Um, yeah. So it was really through my own journey. And then I would say that like, there was definitely points in time where I was like, fuck, I'm good at this. Fuck. I meant to do this. Like being on clients calls, change, like hearing the words, like you've changed my life. Um, I just know every day I know more and more and more that this is my life's purpose. Even just coming to New York this time around, again, it's that affirmation, it's that validation of like, this is my life's work. Like this, I'm fucking, I'm so, this is it. This is fucking it. So I don't feel like I can give you a clear answer. Um, but when you know, it's kind of like love, right? When you know, you know, like when you know, you will know. If you're questioning, then it's probably not the right thing. Um, okay. When you're feeling out of alignment, how do you get back into alignment? Um, it's often because I'm not grounded. So it's, I will, um, and I am very grounded in New York. People find that hard to believe, but I'm very, I'm very, very grounded here. Um, so 
to get back into alignment, I will just do the things that ground me. And for everybody, that's going to be different. And that's why I have a big focus in my coaching of, I don't give you all the answers. I help you discover your own answers. Um, I can give you advice. I can give you tips and tricks. I can tell you what I do. But ultimately, my thing that I do with my clients is you got, I am the guide to help you get your own answers because you've got all the answers already within you. They're just very, very clouded and shattered by crap. So I help you clear the crap so you can find your answers. So for me, what I would do is I journal. Um, med- do, I, do, I love doing a really long meditation, like a one hour meditation. Um, I will, I find sleep really, really helps me. If I'm feeling tired, I'll find it harder to tap in. Baths are always really, really good. Um, I will change my environment. So I'll go to a hotel lobby to work or I'll do something else to just like mix things up a little bit more. Um, And also what really helps me is having a really deep soul conversation with, um, with somebody special. I do that as well. Okay, next one. Um, how can I use manifestation to get rid of excess weight? My body won't let go. It's emotional crap. That's what it is. Um, so you need to get rid of the emotional wounds and work on your emotional self and your spiritual and mental self. So all the subconscious work, that's what that is. Uh, next question, money. I just changed job for a mental health and career al- for, for my mental health and career alignment, but now I earn less. Uh, the question's cut off. I think it's going to be, but now I earn less and something or other. Okay, I, I don't know how to finish that off. Um, I think she's asking about like when you're on that set salary and I answered that in the beginning of that part one. So that's kind of answered. Um, okay, next one. Oh, she finished off the question. Okay, but now I earn less and I can't afford to put petrol in my car and I'm supposed to be moving out next week where... And then she hasn't finished off the question. Okay, so... I think what you're asking is how do I trust or how do I get money? How do I manifest money when it's so obvious that I'm in scarcity? A lot of people, they will look, look, okay, you cannot be in an abundant mindset if you are also in a scarce mindset. If you are looking around and you are like, I have no money, I have, I can't fill up my um, car, 50% of my pay has to go to rent, um, blah, 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 blah. Um, I want a side hustle, but I don't know what to do and create. Can you see how all of that is scarcity, 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 scarcity? So don't expect for abundance to come in when you are not actually open to it. You're not available to it. You right now, you are only available to a scarce mindset. So let that land for a second. Let that land. Okay. So a lot of people think they need to have X, Y, and Z and all this amazing stuff for money to come in. All right. They say, I'm not thriving because I've got a new job, because I have to move house, because I've got to pay rent. But the reason that you're not thriving is not actually because of that. It's because you're offering, like I was saying, a vibration that's different to the vibration of thriving or abundance. You're offering a vibration of scarcity and you can't feel scarce and and thrive at the same time. Abundance can't find you unless you're actually offering that vibration of abundance. So how about you look around you and think of all of the abundant things you've got around you. You've got a job, you've got a car, you've got a place to stay. I mean, amazing. You're studying your last year of uni. Why don't you look at all of those abundant things you have in your life as opposed to scarcity? And ladies, remember that abundance doesn't just mean cash in the bank. Abundance can be somebody buying you lunch, a discount that you weren't expecting. Um, your, I don't know, your landlord, you know, paying for something or other that went wrong in your apartment so you have to pay for it. A classic one that happened to me like two months ago was like I went to go get my, my laptop was breaking and the keyboard was being all funny and he was like, oh, you have to leave your, you have to leave your laptop here for five days. Oh, y'all. <sighs> he was like, you have to leave your laptop here for five days. And I was like, cool, that's not an option. Um, and then he was like, and it'll be $700 to replace your keyboard. I was like, I am not, like, I was like, okay, I can pay that, but I literally cannot leave my laptop here for five days. You're going to need to give me another option. And then um, I just basically was like, look, I really appreciate your time. I was really, really nice to him, right? That's key, obviously. 
and I was in that abundant mindset and I was like, trust, surrender, whatever. I wasn't reacting. I wasn't letting this zap my vibe. And then he was like, look, let me just go like um, uh, blow all the dust out from underneath your keyboard and I'll bring the laptop back. And I was like, great, thank you so much. And guess what? He replaced the keyboard for me with no cost, with no cost. So you replaced the keys that were fucking up. And I was like, holy fucking shit, that's so much abundance right in front of me, right? So start to look for those things that aren't necessarily cash because then your reticular activating system, you are going to be like, you are going, you are more aware of what's happening around you that's in that abundance mindset, which means that you allow yourself to attract more because you are in that vibrational state of abundance, right? So that's key. Also, raise your vibrational frequency to match the frequency of X amount of money coming towards you instead of focusing on a reason that somebody wouldn't give it to you or instead of focusing on a reason as to why you wouldn't get it. Focus on the energy of that money, okay? Focus on the fact that you are providing value for your job, for your boss. Like you are ultimately a human providing value, okay? And everything is vibration. So money isn't a thing, it's a vibration, right? I mean, cash is a physical thing, but it's a vibration. It's a value exchange, it's energy. So focus on that vibration and start to feel start to feel good and offer a high vibrational frequency so you can match the frequency of $100 or $500 or $1,000 or $100,000 to allow it to be brought, brought to you. That's what I do with like all my quantum leaping stuff with my clients. And like if you're a client listening to this, this is what you need to do in the quantum field reprogramming track thing of like jumping to that state of feeling it already, right? So you can bring it into your 3D world right now so you can actually have it right now um you know when your vibration shifts ladies your point of attraction shifts and by the law of attraction your brain it's going to start seeing evidence of all the money and the abundance right to allow that to be brought in and then that's your reticular activating system as well okay um, also what can be really helpful for your logical brain is to write down reasons as to why you'd get this money. Um, because sometimes your brain needs a lot of evidence to prove otherwise. Hopefully that answers that question. Okay. The next question is, um, oh, that's it. Beautiful. Shorter episode, but loving it. Okay. So ladies, I'm going to leave that there because I'm going to go record some stuff on my Academy Girls. Um, if you are wanting to do any of my programs, please make sure that you have a read of them all. So I've got like my Badass Bitches Academy, which is for service-based entrepreneurs only. Um, it's all about clearing your body and clearing your blocks and clearing your wounds so that your business is fucking easy and so that you can attract all the money and the clients and the transformation. Or I've got my Mastermind which is um, longer, the next one's going to be a little bit longer, really deep work, subconscious reprogramming, childhood wounding, parent stuff, uh, a bit of sex stuff in there, tapping into your feminine, getting out of your masculine, womb clearing, all that jazz. You can read all about it. And then I've got my new program called Queen Alchemy. And yes, I fucking love the name and I came up with it myself. Queen Alchemy. I don't know how I came up with it, but I just, I love it. Um, and that's my new program that's going to be launching very, very soon. And that's all about pleasure and sensuality and, and allowing yourself to feel pleasure and turned on all day and having that next level feminine energy where you're really tapping into not just the feminine, but that ne that next level, like sensual, sensual, sexual, creative life force energy in your feminine, um, which is going to be so juicy. So I'm going to leave that there. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Make sure you book your tickets to your flights to New York um, so you can come hear me speak and then you can always move them around but get on them while they're cheap. Um, and I will talk to you all so soon. And of course, as soon as I know about dates and stuff for this New York event, I will let you all know so you can buy your tickets. And I'm so excited and I'm also a bit nervous, but I know that you'll all be here to support me, which I'm super grateful for. So I'll talk to you all soon. Bye. Well, thank you again for tuning in and listening to my podcast. I hope that you got lots of nuggets out of today's show. 
Uh, please, 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 I would be really grateful if you could leave me a review so that more women can find the podcast and therefore I can help more women understand their period and fix their period problems. Because after all, it's a much nicer life to live when we actually love our cycle because we do have to um, keep up with it every single month. Also, if you have any friends or loved ones that you think will enjoy my podcast, I'd be super grateful if you could send it to them as well just to share the love. And that's it for now. So I will catch you on the flip side. Have an amazing day or night wherever you are.